I think you have to be honest about it, and, and that's, you know, this is the new world. In the old world, the great moderation, you could get inflation under control and everything else would be fine. Now, bringing inflation back under control means you have to damage the real economy. It means you cause a recession. Yeah. And there's no way around this. This is why we are in a new regime, why investing has become more difficult. Uh, it's much more complicated, and I think the best thing the central banks can do, and, and more or less they all do this now, is to be open and, and acknowledge that bringing inflation back uh, under control, bringing price stability back into the game, entails um, essentially recessions. How's it going, fellow traders? It's Magic Trader here, and this is your CFTC report for the data that was reported on January 10, 2023. Here's a brief snapshot of the positions held by the large institutions as of that date. And so, as we always do, let's begin by taking a look at gold. Welcome back, everybody. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. And uh, we got a lot going on in these markets uh, to start them off. We see a big push in gold. Okay, big push to the upside. Take a look at that. That's pretty significant, okay? Now, the data that we're about to look at includes this candle right here. So that big candle to the upside is what we're really looking at. So what does that tell us? That tells us that longs increase from 230,000 to 243,000 so the institutions are increasing their long positions hence the big rally up in price uh, but they also increase some of their shorts from 89 to 93 not as large as the longs but they did increase them and net positions now increase from a positive 141,000 to a positive 150,000 now let's take a little step back and take a look at what's going on here if you take a look at the sentiment you can see clearly that back here they were bearish okay up to november 8. up after that point we can see that they were neutral okay throughout here okay a little bit more neutral and we are still neutral okay so we went from basically bearish to neutral so at this point, there is no reason, by looking at the CFTC data, there's no reason for us to be suspecting that this continued momentum that we've seen is going to continue even higher. Because as far as we're concerned in terms of the data, they are neutral with their positions. Yes, we see them increasing their longs, but they're just beginning to increase those longs in a significant way. Okay? You look here. These cells are slightly red, meaning slightly aggressive. So we should wait and see if they're going to become more aggressive with their long positions. I wouldn't want to jump the gun and start getting into long positions on gold now because it's just not strong enough evidence for me to uh, to support a getting in long at this time. All right. So. As of this morning, retail traders are mostly short, okay, mostly short, which is probably the reason why they're pushing up uh, price so aggressively, okay? All right, let's get on to oil. What do we see with oil? Well, this morning we're seeing a rally up in oil, okay, a big push up in oil. Why is that? Well, likely because we have an institutional buying area that's in play here. So what does that mean? Well, usually at institutional buying areas, we have the banks either buying or taking profits on short positions. It's usually one or the other, okay? So we had a push down into this buying area, and what do we have here? An increase of uh, long positions from 230,000 to 307,000. At the same time, they increased their shorts as well, 95 to 101 but the bottom line is they increased them from 134 to 205 now previous to that they were at 247 okay just like previous on the long positions they were 325,000 they closed longs and now they're adding them again okay so they closed longs and now they're adding them again so 
Uh, if we look at the coloration of the cells here, what do we see? We see that they were very positive here, very bullish here, okay? Neutral, now a little bit of positive. I wouldn't be trading oil right now. If there was a bias, it would obviously be bullish because of this push here, okay, from this area of demand. So the bias would be bullish, but there aren't any sustainable trends on the charts. And without any sustainable trends, then, you know, there's not much to hold price in a specific direction. All right, next we have the US dollar. So what do we see with the US dollar? We see that price was consolidating before a big drop in price. And what were the institutions doing? Well, we can see that the institutions were slightly increasing their long positions, 33.1 to 33.9. But take a look at shorts, 15,000 to 17,000. That's a 2,000 increase. That's pretty decent, pretty decent. But regarding net positions, the only thing that does is just reduce net positions from 17,000 to 16,000. So they're still bullish, okay? They're still bullish in that sense, in terms of their net positions. Now, if we look at the coloration here, we'll see that they are neutral, okay? So that's matching what we're seeing with gold, where they were bearish, but now neutral, and here they were bullish, but now neutral. So when things are like that, I don't want to trade them. I like to see strong momentum a clear signal that they are either bullish or bearish and uh, something more sustainable, okay? From what I'm seeing on the charts here, there's room for price to drop and it's likely that that is what's going to take place. All right, that's the US dollar. Now let's go over to the Aussie. Aussie, this one's an interesting one. So we see the push up in gold and what do we see? Here on the chart, we're seeing that push up as well. Okay, a push up inside an institutional selling area. Now, usually these selling areas are used for either taking profits on long positions or filling in shorts. But we do know that the Aussie has been in a bearish cycle for quite some time. Okay, increasing shorts, taking profits, increasing shorts, taking profits. Now we've got price rallying right up into a supply area. Now, as you can see that this whole time, longs were never of any real focus. Okay. Look at the coloration. Blue throughout, meaning cooled off. The positions were cooled off. So now we're inside a of a selling area, but we don't see an increase in short positions. Okay. They were 69,000. They rallied up to, uh, they, they pushed them up to 71,000. Now a big significant drop to 63,000. So we're not seeing any signs that there's going to be an accumulation here of a short position. So I wouldn't be trading this right now, personally. Okay. I think it's best to just sit on the sidelines because we're getting mixed signals here. And this section here, oh, I should turn that to red. It is still bearish. It is still bearish. But when you have this type of price action heading into a supply area, I'm not interested in selling this pair or going long at this point. Okay. Uh, retail traders are about 50 50. So there's nothing really to gauge off of that as well. So let's move over to the US CAD. What do we see with the US CAD? So immediately when I look at the US CAD, what I see is that their short positions have been cooled off for the last few weeks. Okay, so they're not focusing on shorts. Now, remember, we were just saying that there's evidence to support that the dollar could drop even further. Well, there's no evidence to support that the US CAD could drop even further. So that's one interesting point that I want to point out. Uh, another thing I will point out is that when I look at long positions, I can see that they're slightly aggressive, but not as aggressive as what they were recently back in December. And since December, when contracts expired, what did they do? They've been reducing their long exposure. All right. Now, were they bearish at one point? Yes, they were back uh, up until September. Okay. Last summer, pretty much. 
And they've been uh, pretty much more bullish than anything lately since uh, December of last year. And if we take a look at the net positions, we see that they've been just growing and growing and growing to the upside. Bullish and bullish and more bullish. But if you look at the charts, we don't see any institutional buying area in play. There's no institutional buying area in here or here. So even though sentiment is bullish, I wouldn't be buying the US CAD at this point. Especially when we have the dollar signaling that there could be a bigger move to the downside. Uh, interesting thing is uh, US CAD in terms of the retail positions, they're slightly more bearish at this point than they are anything else. Okay. US Swiss franc. Look at that. Longs cooled off. Shorts cooled off. There's nothing really to gauge any direction here. Then we look at the uh, sentiment up until December when contracts expired. They were bullish up until contract expiry. And they haven't been ever since. And now we see a slight decline in price from the highs. Now this latest sell here is bullish, but that's just one sell. There's not much more to go on. When we look at net positions, what do you see? They decreased from the highs of 17,000 on the positive side. Now we're only at 7,000. So at this point, I wouldn't be trading the US Swiss as well. And when you look at retail traders, they're mostly long, like really aggressively long, which is quite interesting. So uh, not a good idea to be long, I'd say. Okay, let's take a look at the Euro. Euro US dollar. What do we have here? So just recently we were mentioning how they were aggressively long, okay? Aggressive. And they reached highs of 251,000, which I said they're going to have to take some profits. And they did. They took some profits. And I talked about this in, in some detail with, uh, with members, so I won't go into too much detail. But they took some profits and they've since added some back in, which is causing this rally up in price. Interesting thing is a uh, institutional supply area has been taken out and now we can see that there's a chance that price is going to go even higher. Especially considering the fact that, take a look at the sentiment here, it's somewhat bullish, right? And if you take, it net, take a look at net positions here, it's also bullish. And it's been pretty consistently climbing up higher and higher and higher. So, thing is, do I want to be buying right now? Not really. So at this point, I'm just kind of waiting, okay? I'm just kind of waiting because we don't have trends. We don't have anything very sustainable. Yes, we have great increasing in long positions, but they're like pretty much maxed out. I don't want to get in after they've already made their move, okay? I don't want to get in after they've already accumulated a long position and they're maxed out. So these are the things that are keeping me on the sidelines with respect to the euro. And another thing is that uh, retail traders are mostly short right now as price is being driven to the upside. So they could just push this up even higher until retail traders get out of their shorts and then start getting in longs. And then we can see them uh, reverse price. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, the pound. Interesting one. Look at the data on this one on the longs. They were very cooled off. They rallied up to 53,000, so they got aggressive with their longs. And this is coming just as price was contacting this demand area here. So there is pressure to the upside on the pound, but we also have to remember that we have a supply area that came into play here. So we have two forces combating against each other, okay? So um, now we look at this here, look. They were bearish, but then they turned bullish. And now look at the latest sell. It's a little bit of a tinge of redness in there. They're all over the place. This is not a good time. This is not a good time. These are signals of staying out of these markets. Okay, so I'm not going to be touching this one either. Retail traders are mostly short, uh, so we'll just wait until the banks uh, 
make uh, something a little bit clearer for us and, and the market conditions are favorable for us to trade. US dollar, Japanese yen. Well, we said that the uh, likely price was going to drop from those highs and that's exactly what took place. A nice significant drop coming really deep within this area of demand here. Uh, we used to have longs aggressive. Remember? Right here. And I said they're going to take profits on their long positions. It's exactly what happened. Look at that from 140. 118. See how red it was, the sell? Look how red it was. That's how we knew they were going to start taking profits. Now look how blue it is. They're not even concentrated. Concentrating on long positions because they just took their profits. But at the same time, when we look at short positions, they're not really focusing on shorts either because of the coloration. Look at that. Look how blue. Okay, so there's no real focus on shorts. Uh, if we look at sentiment, look, it's mostly neutral. So what does that tell you? Does that tell you that you should be trading right now? No, sit on the sidelines. It's not a good idea to be trading this one right now. Retail traders are mostly long at this point as price is dropping. Not good. All right, last but not least, we got the Kiwi. Uh, longs are uh, cooled off. Shorts are cooled off. You can clearly see that. Sentiment is giving us a buy. Okay, a buy signal, but only if it's in correlation with other signals. We got a demand area being contacted, which is good, but lack of trends, lack of anything that could sustain this momentum is what's keeping me from trading, especially with the all the other markets in the condition that they're in. So at this point, I'm just sitting on the sidelines with this one. Retail traders are mostly short the Kiwi, and that is it ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining me again today if you want to know more about how we trade how we do our analysis join us at www.whiteoakfx.com thanks like to have you we just started a new class we just had our first class yesterday so it's not too late to sign up sign up join the classes and get rolling all right take care have a good one talk to you later